Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Simon from BizLearn. Hi and welcome to another NXCAD Secrets tutorial. Today it's about horizontal modeling, hybrid modeling, and especially Boolean operations and what kind of problems occur when doing it the wrong manner as many many people do. And if you ask yourself now what is a Boolean operation besides unite, subtract, intersect, well, there are a couple of things we can do, especially regarding the hybrid modeling stuff. It's face blend, for example. Face blend can be used to combine solid bodies or sheet bodies, or a solid body with a sheet body. And the result might be a solid body or a sheet body, whatever. This is a kind of hybrid thing I'm going to show you. And I have a few Boolean operations within this part. It's one face blend, another one, and a unite. Well, I think unite is clear. I mirrored something, it gets united. Um, I've created my first body with details, and I've created another body here, and both are combined with each other by using the face blend. Same thing here. I've created a new body, and it's combined with the first one. Well, I said Boolean operations are mostly, in most of the cases, not very stable. And they have a huge influence to your part, and I show you what kind of problems might occur. Can you see this extrude here? Well, I got my main body here, and you can see the side is, is round. So I needed to extrude a face and combine it with my main body. So this is my face extrusion. It's a solid body here. This is a solid body. I asked my, my training participants to modify this part. So they used to build this part and save it and create the next part, but I wanted them to modify it. I wanted them to, to make this face straight. And it seems so easy. I just, well, said maybe delete this one. And that's what I'm gonna do. And you can see most of the part is even deleted. It's broken. My part is broken. And the question is why? Why do all the things break? Why does this one break? It's the bowling operation. Let's have a look at, at the path. So I'm gonna go back a few features. You can see my body is, is blue. And I've extruded another one, which is green. After combining them, the result is blue. So the second body was green, remember. I've created another one, which is red. So my third body is red. And after uniting them, my result is red. I've created a mirror body, which is yellow, and after uniting them, it's yellow. Well, the question is, why does the color flip? Maybe think about repairing all this stuff. Have a look at the relations here. My Unite has so many relations. My face blend has so many relations. Also this one, this one is clear. Anyway, if you have lots of relations within your features, things might break. There are a lot of dependencies, of course, and a kind of chain reaction. If you modify this object, all the rest has to be computed again because of all these dependencies. This is what we call vertical modeling. Always selecting the newer object as a reference. Let's do it the other way around. Let's repair this part. So I'm gonna go back a few steps to my first face blend and I'm gonna open it. And I have to switch those objects. My first object, this is my target. It's a combine command, so it's like a unite. It also asks for a target first. But this is my newer object with the extrude 4. So I told you when doing it the horizontal manner, always select your older object first. So that's what I'm gonna do, but I have to deselect both first of all and select my older body first. It's this one and this is my newer body. And here you can see a direction that flips, so I have to reverse it. And here is your preview of your blend, so I'm gonna hit OK. And you can see the color maintains. So if I go back, the color maintains. Let's go ahead. Here's my next Boolean operation. And it's gonna be broken, I believe. Also, this one is gonna be broken. Why? Well, the extrude is not independent. If I double click it, you can see there is for the end value until next used. 
And when you use until next, the system reminds a body. And you remember the body had a different color, it was green. Each body color is related to a body ID. Imagine my first extrude, which has the ID 1. My second one has ID 2. If you combine them with face blend, the result, which ID will it have? It will have the ID of your target. My first target in the first case was my newer object with ID 2. So the until next remembers ID 2, which is no more here. Because this body inherited the ID of my older object now, which is this one, it's ID 1. So I just have to switch this to value and until next again, and it will recreate this kind of value here. I'm gonna apply this. So this face blend is still not correct, as you can see, because within this face blend, this newer body was selected first. So I also repair here. I'm gonna deselect this and this one and select my older body with ID 1 first. You can now think of your mirror geometry. Mirror geometry is uh, a body which is mirrored. Annex recognizes a body with a specific ID. It must have been the red body, so ID 3. But after creating my bowling operation, after repairing it, the ID of my result will be 1. And this mirror geometry is not broken yet, but when I open it, you can see there is no object. There is a possibility to delete it because he recognizes an ID which is no more existing. We've created three bodies and after each combination, the result was one body. So in the end, it's just one body and two bodies are missing especially the one to be mirrored. So I'm gonna select this one. And you can see the last bowling operation, my Unite, was broken. I'm gonna show you again. I'm gonna color this new result and create a new Unite. And you can see if I select my older object first and then this one, the result will have this color and the other way round if I select this one first, which is the right object. And you can also see it within the timestamp. You can see it below the cursor. It's solid body of extrude 1. This is still my solid body of extrude 1. First, and here you can see it's my mirror geometry 9. So this is my newer object. Second. And the color is blue. And now you're able to delete this. And if you have a look at the dependencies, can you see this? It's all clear. There's only two dependencies. Here, it's a little bit more, but here you can see it very, very clear. T compared to before, we have less dependencies. What does it mean? Less calculation time, less problems that will occur. Think about it. When you do your bowling operations, whether it's your night or face blend or trim and extend or a patch or whatever, every kind of bowling operation, Always select your older body first as a target. And let's have a look. There is, if you wonder what, how colorizing works. If I select my body and hit this button here, edit display. This specific color is related to a specific ID. Everybody has an ID. If you have a look at the body, and open the information and scroll down a little bit, you can see the ID is 7421. And if I go to this timestamp, select my body, you can see, and you guess what's coming, it's of course 7421, it's the same ID. And IDs might switch if you do it wrong manner, if you do your Boolean operation the wrong way. Also, this sheet has an ID. You can see it's 9418. But it's not gonna maintain because after this bowling operation, the ID of your extrude is no more available to be related to something. Um, you remember this one until next? There was a relation 
from my value and value until a specific ID, which was no more available. So let's go back all these steps. Just to remember, let's have a look at my old state of my construction when everything was yellow before switching tool and target within Boolean operations. Let's go back to this body. It's not purple, but it's still 7, 4 or something. Let's have a look. 7, 4, 2, 1. Let's go to this point. Maybe you remember, I don't. And it's 9, 4, 1, 8. And of course, my result, you can see it by the color. You can see it's 9, 4, 1, 8. So my first ID, this one, is no more available. And also here, after face blend, the ID switches. And you can see the extrude is related to the green stuff. And of course, the extrude will break after modifying my first face blend. Let's have a look at this again, because it's not so simple if you do not think about IDs. I do a lot. I, I did a lot. I don't have to anymore, because I'm just following a simple rule. Always select your older body first. So I'm, that's what I'm going to do. This one and this one. So the green ID, the ID of my green body. So let's see what happened to my extrude number 7 after I switched my IDs. The green ID is no more available and you can see the extrude is broken because until next does not find the ID it is remembering so we have to give it a new input now so i just have to switch as you recognized and here's the next problem again so remember bolin operations anyway horizontal modeling in general means always select your older object first and not your newer object so now you wonder how this model was built maybe um, you did see it a lot now. Face blend is possibility to combine um, sheets and solids. But anyway, um, I started with a solid. Mm, let's think about starting with a sheet instead. So I'm going to switch here to sheet. Does it make a difference? Well, I have an edge blend here related to all my body edges. I'm going to delete this one. It's no more necessary. You can see within my selection rule, right click body edges, all right. And I've extruded another face and created a face blend. You can see the system does not make a difference between sheet or solid. Of course, if you unite, it's, it's a difference. You can only unite bodies, but you could subtract sheets and solids from each other or create an intersect from between a solid body or and a sheet body, that's possible. Let's go ahead. Here's my next extrude, it's still red, and I want to switch target and tool, of course, because I'm gonna repair it again. So my older object is this one, and that's my newer object. And the interesting thing here is, well, maybe I, I'm gonna deselect this. Can you see this? It's a solid body. This is a solid body, and I'm going to combine solid with sheet. I just have to reverse. If you wonder how a face blend works, well, relate to body faces um, is, is cool because it doesn't make a difference whether you have two faces or a large number of faces. It will always be blended. That's why I use body faces here. Um, have a look at my old videos. There I explain a lot about feature selection rules. Anyway, the direction here has to point towards your radius center, as you can see, and also the direction of my, my other face. They point toward each other, and you could reverse directions here and get completely different results. That's pretty, pretty cool. Well, but that's my right result, my proper result here. And there's something I want to do. I want to convert this to a sheet as well. Here you can see it's a sheet. It's a complete sheet now. And I will mirror this. 
And of course, my mirror is broken. And of course, my Unite will also break. But anyway, we can repair that. Now I have to sue my faces because it's faces. And the sue function is below surface, sue. And also here, it doesn't matter. It's a bowling operation. It asks you for target and tool. Select your older body first, not this one. Select this one first. It's older. It's my first extrude. Why did I switch to faces? Because I think it's, it's more stable. Of course, I have to use thicken here to create thickness. But anyway, creating such uh, sheet parts, kind of sheet metal parts, however, by use of faces allows you to do interesting things. Maybe I want another cylinder here in this area, I would just have to go back. I'm gonna copy and paste this. And position is okay as it is. I just have to move my coordinate system. Let's go ahead. You can see it's also thickened. And if I've created this part, the, the other way around by use of solid and the shell command in the end, I would have to modify my parts because I would have to select those faces here. If I don't want these to be mirrored, which you can see here, I just, well, I cannot move them because of the um, face blend here. So I have to unlink it. Now I can move it and it's not mirrored. And now I can use a face blend to combine them. I'm gonna do it by copy and paste. Here we are. You can see how easy drag and drop is just because of I did everything as horizontal as possible. That's the reason. Things are independent and that's pretty cool. I'm not just doing training parts. I'm doing parts that have thousands of features and they're not getting complex. They're not becoming complex because following such simple rule, horizontal modeling. Thanks for watching. It's a long video again. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found something really interesting. Subscribe my channel if you want to be informed about NXCAD secrets, which I'm uploading several times within a week.